Today, we have a very special guest joining us, Dr. Vladimir Malatek. Vlad is a clinical professor of psychiatry and behavioral science at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine in Greenville, South Carolina. He also has a private practice there as well. This year, you may know, Vlad is the co-chair for the national meeting, which will be held in Nashville, Tennessee. And we must say, he's also a cherished member of the Psych Congress Steering Committee. Thanks for joining me today, Vlad. Thank you very much, Sandra. I'm delighted to chat with you this afternoon. Me as well. I trust that you and your loved ones are all doing well during these difficult times? Uh, we are all doing well. We're in regular contact uh, uh, with our children and grandchildren, and uh, as I'm sure you are, and so far everybody is doing well. Thank you. That's very good news. I'm glad to hear it. You know, I've heard a phrase recently uh, related to COVID-19, the new normal. I spent a little time thinking about that. And what I realized is this new normal, it's requiring all of us to make a lot of changes professionally, personally. So I was thinking today while you and I were talking that we might begin by addressing professional changes that we're all dealing with. So I'm wondering, Vlad, what changes have you made in your practice setting or even your academic setting in this new era of COVID-19? So in terms of uh, practice setting, uh, my practice um, due to concerns for everybody's uh, uh, safety, primarily our patients, but also our office staff, has converted to telehealth. So we're using an, an internet-based uh, platform where there is a visual communication. Of course, it's a little bit different experience than having patients sitting across the room. Uh, but there's also a little bit of, of difference in terms of topics and what patients choose to focus on. Uh, in many instances, there is less self-focus, although, of course, we address all the relevant clinical issues, but uh, uh, more concern about what is going on in the society, more concern, uh, uh, concern about what is going on with their loved ones. Uh, the sessions tend to be more on point in some way than they have been in the past. But otherwise, a uh, very smooth transition. Uh, uh, patients appear to be quite comfortable with this platform. Uh, in terms of some other aspects, uh, when it comes to teaching, uh, that is pretty much the way it, it used to be because I have to be on site and working with uh, residents who are seeing patients. Of course, now uh, we are taking uh, additional precautions. Patients are being screened for COVID as well as their families. But uh, the teaching aspect is not changed. Uh, uh, part that has changed quite a bit, uh, I was involved with a lot of lecturing. Uh, live, that has all stopped. So this is probably the longest period that, that, that I've uh, not traveled and stayed at home in the last 15 years. Um, there are a lot of good aspects to it because uh, uh, I'm able now to, to research some topics uh, which uh, I, I didn't have enough time in the past uh, to prepare lectures, uh, to prepare uh, some uh, uh, new presentation material. So uh, it's it's very nice. It's a, it's a wonderful catch-up opportunity um, in a professional sense. I think everything you commented on, Vlad, are the things that many of us are dealing with. I think the, what you started with this transition to video platform connection, not only with our patients, but with our family members as well. Most people are saying the same thing. Most of us Site Congress family members, steering committee members that I've already spoken with are saying, you know, I was a little hesitant at first, but it's a relatively easy platform that may actually, in a very good way, disrupt the way that we're taking care of our patients. So thank you for sharing that. I was thinking also what you said about the content of your sessions with your patients, and it reminded me that at the national meeting, that's being held in Nashville, Tennessee later this year, you're going to be speaking on major depressive disorder for one of your sessions. And I'm wondering, are you worried at all, Vlad, that COVID-19 is going to result potentially in an increase in patients who are suffering from major depressive disorder? Uh, I think that certainly may be the case. Uh, there are a few factors involved there. 
uh, obviously, if uh, the patient is ill, if their family members are influenced by uh, COVID virus, uh, there will be grave concerns about health. Uh, with time, I'm afraid that there will also be personal losses. And uh, uh, both stress, uh, societal stress, and obviously losses are a risk as well as having medical conditions. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that the ones influenced by COVID uh, will be afraid for their lives and that it may aggravate uh, their depressive symptomatology. So uh, I think that both uh, you and I are anticipating that uh, probably with some delay in months to come, uh, we will be seeing more depression. I think you're right, Vlad. And I think it's a good point to for us to have discussed because the messaging for our Site Congress family members is this, that as clinicians, we really need to be alert to that possibility. Remember to be asking all the right clinical questions, using screening tools, just so that we can stay on top of that as we anticipate some of these potential changes. So thanks for that, Vlad. And I don't know if you're, you're, if you're hearing about this, but uh, from, from some patients, uh, uh, there is a different kind of stress and stress that has to do with economic concerns. Absolutely. Uh, because uh, there are, if they're not laid off, the family members are, uh, the family budget is shrinking and there's quite a bit of uh, fear in the future. Uh, how will this all unfold and how long will this situation last? So again, I, I think that with duration of these restrictions and the duration of at least this acute phase of epidemic, uh, we're going to be seeing, I'm afraid, more and more psychopathology. I agree completely. You know, I wonder if you would, just for a moment, would you share with us your top three learnings, whether they're in your professional setting or in your personal setting, things that you've learned in response to COVID-19? Right. So, so uh, there are, in my mind, some, some interesting aspects of it. One is regarding social isolation. I think that social distancing and social isolation uh, is primarily uh, related to physical distance. Uh, what I'm finding out that when it comes to emotional connectedness, uh, there is much richer email exchange, text exchange, many more phone calls, many more video calls with the family and friends. So it may be paradoxically, in some ways, there is uh, more social connectedness, at least uh, at emotional level and and very rich i know you are part of this exchange intellectual exchange uh there is now a form social network we're all supporting each other sharing ideas and i think it's making our lives considerably easier so i, I would say that would be one thing that uh, uh social distancing is not necessarily emotional in the intellectual distancing uh, the other part uh, uh, has to do with health practices. Uh, in, in this situation, although we, we can go to our uh, workout gym and many of the parks, uh, not many, but all state parks and county parks are closed. So uh, it, there are some limitations, but on the other hand, uh, we are taking walks in an area where it's safe, where there is not, not high density of population. We're exercising at home much more regularly. We're paying more attention to what we eat because now uh, shopping expeditions are more scarce. So we have to focus that we're getting the right food at the right time. So I, I would say uh, when it comes to some of these health practices, uh, well, we're more thoughtful and more organized in how we approach them. The third part is that uh, uh, there is less externally imposed structure. So uh, first few days when we had a lot of flexibility, uh, we were taking our sweet time getting certain things done because there is always tomorrow and structure is much looser now than it has to has been. So what we're finding out now is that uh, we have to impose a little bit of self-discipline and we have to uh, talk about the next day structure and how we're going to use time 
and when will be the meals and when are we going to socialize and when are we going to uh, study work, uh, work with our patients and so forth. So uh, it's translated paradoxically in better utilization of time. And I think uh, in some ways uh, uh, it's more relaxed and, and uh, there is more contentment, but we're getting just as much done. I know, Vlad, as I'm listening to you, everything you said uh, in many ways brought a smile to my face because they each resonated deeply because we're experiencing the same things. And I'm certain that our Psych Congress family at large, that most everyone is experiencing each of the three things you mentioned. So thank you so much for sort of reviewing those for us. Really great learnings. And I'm glad to hear that it's reflecting your experience as well. Absolutely. Very, very similar, if not exactly the same. <laughs> you know, we have a couple of minutes left. There's one question I want to ask you about that I don't want to let slip by. And that is, in response to COVID-19, what kind of personal changes at home or either with family members have you made? Now, some of them you've already mentioned, but I'm wondering, are there any other learnings that you'd like to share with us? Uh, well, one thing is, uh, by circumstances, my wife and I are actually spending much more time together. Uh, so uh, I guess in good relationships, that can really uh, strengthen the, rela the relationship and make it uh, more profound. Um, Unfortunately, I'm also hearing from my patients that uh, some, sometimes it's, it's shortcuts to relationship disasters. So one has to qualify it. But uh, it, it is an adjustment. I, I think that uh, hopefully we will all emerge from this situation uh, with more closeness uh, with, with our uh, uh partners uh, with more closeness in some ways with, with our patients because uh, we, we're all in the same struggle. We're all trying to so survive this uh, together. I like that, Vlad. It's very touching because the important message is whether you have a perfect relationship, not so perfect, that where we're headed is the same place and that if we can do it together with some compassion and kindness, it's going yeah. to be a much easier journey. So, And frankly, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but even if the relationship is not uh, perfect, many times it is uh, due to uh, benign neglect or because people tend to sweep things under the rug and uh, in the usual pace and rhythm of life that is e easily avoided and neglected. I would look at this situation as an opportunity. You know, let, let's very carefully and tactfully bring some of these issues up and let's start addressing them now because now we do have more mastery over our time and schedule. I love that, Vlad. It, it, it's such a positive way to look at the situation and to say, hey, let's do something good with this. Indeed. So, thank Indeed. you for that. Thank you know, Vlad, I want to thank you because you were so kind to take time away from a busy schedule to spend with me and with our Site Congress family at large. So thank you so, so much for your time today. It was just enjoyable to be with you. And, you know, I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, I, I always enjoy uh, speaking with you, but uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing for the sake of our Site Congress community, because uh, the more we share, the more little items and crumbs uh, other our colleagues uh, might find useful or applicable to their situation. And uh, frankly, I'm learning from all of you. So uh, th th this... Uh, uh, elevation of mutuality, I think, will do us all good. Beautifully stated, Vlad. I'd like to turn my attention now to our entire Site Congress family. Thank you for joining me and Vlad today for this interesting and heartfelt conversation. We send our very best to each and every one of you. So please stay healthy, be well. I'll talk to you very soon. So, Bye for now.